And today we are in East Tidy, Presbyterian in fact. Reverend Peter Shane joins us this morning. G'day there, sir. How are you? Good morning, Andrew. I'm pretty well, thank you. And you? Yeah, I'm very well. Thanks for joining our little small group. So I hope you're armed with your, uh, you know, your favourite slice or cup of tea or something at the at the ready. <laughs> um, well, no, just sitting at my desk. So. Ah, well, <laughs> good enough for our purposes today. Um, look, we've been talking about uh, verses from the Gospel of John and reflecting on God's love for us. And so, look, I would love to hear what is on your heart, what's on your mind to, to share with our biggest small group this morning. Yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I, I thought about John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17, where um, Jesus reinstates Peter after all Peter's failure. So I mean, it seems mm. to me one of the most loving things we can do is forgive someone who has hurt us. Wow, yeah. yeah. And if we know the backstory here, of course, you know Peter had been accused of being a follower of Jesus and he denied it. Um, Jesus said he would, Peter said he wouldn't, but he did. It was a massive failure. Um, because his, his fear for his own safety uh, came before loyalty to Jesus. And, and there had been other encounters prior to this. I mean, Jesus had appeared to the disciples uh, on this day. Uh, Jesus had met the disciples on the beach and he cooked fish for them. Mm. And it, it appears that nothing has been said. At least we don't have any record of anything being said about Peter's disloyalty. So it seems like there might have been that awkward silence. Where everyone <laughs> yes. knows what the others are thinking, <laughs> right. but no one says anything. That's a great point, yeah. And, and you, know, you have to wonder if Peter was wondering what Jesus was thinking. Would Jesus ever trust him again? Mm. Would he have any part in Jesus' mission now? Had he blown it completely? And then Jesus takes the initiative, which again I think is part of his love. You know, he doesn't he doesn't wait. He he takes the initiative. And three times he asked Peter if he loved him, and three times Peter said yes, he did. And so Jesus gave uh, each time gave Peter a role: feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. And, and Jesus must have been incredibly hurt by all the disciples deserting him, and especially Peter. Mm. Um, and Jesus had said that if anyone was ashamed of him, God would be ashamed of that person. And, and Peter had not been willing to identify with Jesus. He denied even knowing him. And, and friends just don't do that. But Jesus turned around and showed that love of, of being able to and willing to forgive. And I think it does take love to take that initiative. And then Jesus gave Peter the opportunity to declare his love. His, his actions had suggested that he loved himself more than he loved Jesus. Mm. But Jesus gave them the opportunity to correct that. And Jesus restored him to a place of ministry. And an interesting little thing in it, it says that Peter was hurt that Jesus asked him three times. So like, did Jesus not believe him? It didn't, it didn't seem like love. It seemed like Jesus was hurting him. Um, but he had denied him three times, and Jesus gave him three opportunities to express mm. his real desire. Yes, that was a mistake. Yes, that was awful. But my real heart desire is, Jesus, I love you. And and Jesus uh, trusted him with responsibilities, which is a, a wonderful restoration back again. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I think, you know, even one thing that stands out as you're sharing this too is that, you know, Jesus took the initiative to restore that. Because I think sometimes when we are hurt, our instinct is, I'll move on when they apologize to me. You know, yes. that person has hurt me. And when they come and say sorry, then I will move on. Then I will let it go. Then I will whatever. Yes. But yeah. it, it often doesn't happen like that, right? And I think Jesus recognized it. There was a, there was a distance there. Peter knew he did, did something wrong. Jesus knew he did something wrong. And without dealing with it, they're just going to sit in awkwardness for all eternity. Yes, exactly. And, and if there has been a frosty silence between me and another person, it's really hard to break that, isn't it? Oh, so the, the person who takes that initiative. But, yep. And I, I'm conscious that when, when I let Jesus down yet again, mm. and I feel rotten about that, I, I can wonder if I've, if I've blown it and, and God will no longer forgive me. Have I used up all my opportunities for forgiveness? <laughs> yeah. uh, and in this incident, I think that shows Jesus's willingness to forgive because mm. it comes out of love. He's mm. willing to forgive because he loves us. And I think it's just amazing, and I'm just incredibly grateful that that's the nature of Jesus. And if, mm. if, if Jesus was like me, he probably would have stopped. <laughs> that's true. Um, but it's just the nature of Jesus to love and to forgive. Mm, yeah, I've, I've heard the comparison made before um, that, you know, Peter was one of those people who, yeah, ran around and said, this is how much I love God. This is how much I'll do for God. This is how much I love him. And 
yet you had say that compared with John, who in the Gospel of John recognizes that really it's about God's love for him. That, mm. uh, you know, even at the foot of the cross, we found the person who was saying, I love God, I love God, was nowhere to be seen. Whereas the person who was saying, God loves me, God loves me, was the one who was at the foot of the cross that day. Well, that That's really interesting. That That's quite significant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's not about me and how clever I am, but just how much God loves me. Mm, mm. And of course, he knows he knows everything about us as well, right? Like I think sometimes when our, our failings emerge, it's more of a shock to us because I think God, God knows mm. us through and through and he knows what our faults really are. And maybe, you know, this is what Peter was dealing with as well. Like us thinking, yep, I think I've got it together. I think, I think I'm committed. I think I've got this all sorted out. And then this yep. failing comes out and really, I don't think, God's shocked by it. I think we're shocked by it. And then that's what we end up using as a way of creating distance between us and him. But he's willing to restore us. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And when we fail in areas where we're particularly weak, when mm. when we fail in the same area over and over again, that's when we can, as you say, we can think, okay, no, I've, I've sorted this now. <laughs> yeah. And, and then we fail again. Mm. But, but God, I mean, we fail, but God's faithful, absolutely yeah. faithful every time. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's, it's a great reminder this morning and I think a great way for us to talk about this, uh, you know, in our biggest small group this morning. So, Peter, thank uh, you for making a bit of time to, to share that wis- wisdom with us today. It's a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you for all you're doing. Ah, amazing. I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss the next video. We'll see you in the next one.